Paleoanthropologists have traditionally placed Homo ergaster as likely ancestral to Homo erectus. Top paleoanthropologists such as Chris Stringer refer to the species as Homo ergaster or early Homo erectus. But are they two entirely separate species? The Turkana boy discovery. Homo ergaster bones were first discovered in 1975 by Richard Leakey's team at Lake Turkana. Leakey sent a scouting team led by expert fossil hunter Kamoya Kamu to the western bank of Lake Turkana. Kamu spotted the first bits of bones on a rocky hillside. From AustraliaMuseum.com, Homo ergaster was first proposed as a new species in 1975 after scientists re-examined a fossil jaw previously identified as Homo habilis and noticed some unique features. Colin Groves of Australia National University has been called the father of primate taxonomy. He is also considered a founder of cryptozoology. Vratislav Mazak was a zoologist and anatomist at Prague National Museum. Based on the lightness of the jaw and smaller teeth, Mazak and Groves assigned the specimen to a new taxa, Homo ergaster. Leakey let Groves know of his displeasure. He wanted the taxa classification to remain Homo erectus. Groves interview. Richard Leakey wrote to me saying that we ought to have waited until it had been fully described in detail in a specialist journal. Other unidentified specimens had been discovered in years past and stored away. They were later assigned to Homo ergaster. eFossils.org the assignment of KNMER3733 to Homo ergaster remains debated, with some scientists arguing that Homo ergaster should be subsumed into Homo erectus. Additional Homo ergaster specimens were found in the years that followed, including by famed paleoanthropologist Ronald Clark in South Africa. Turkana Boy Reassessed Turkana Boy ranks up there with Donald Johansson's Lucy as one of the most amazing hominid finds in all of paleoanthropology history. Some facts. 89% of the skeleton has been recovered. Dated 1.5 to 1.6 million years ago. Brain size 880 cubic centimeters. Science writers soon came up with romantic stories of how Turkana Boy was a direct ancestor of modern Africans and a precursor to all modern humans. Artist renditions gave Turkana Boy a very modern appearance. He was portrayed as tallish, svelte, and having a very modern-like facial appearance. It was even suggested by some anthropologists that he was a direct ancestor of the Maasai. From Australia Museum, the Turkana boy had a tall slender body adapted for striding out across the extensive savanna plains. But now new evidence has come to light. A re-examination of the skeleton in 2020 showed that Turkana boy was closer to an Australopithecine with an anatomy similar to a chimpanzee. Fred Spohr, London National History Museum, quote, this iconic ancestor was probably a little less like us than we portrayed it over the years, not the lean, athletic, long distance runner we imagined, end quote. Paleoanthropologists reveal stunning new information. Dr. Karen Babb of Midwestern University in Arizona recently appeared on an episode of Evolution Suit. She made some amazing observations on Turkana Boy.
According to Dr. Babb, a new analysis of the Turkana boy ribcage found it was, quote, quite deep and wider than originally reconstructed, end quote. She also reported a new homo erectus pelvis bone has been recovered. It is more flaring and less modern. This would indicate less efficient bipedalism. Continuing, quote, and that shape is actually more primitive. It suggests there might have been an error in the reconstruction of the Turkana boy pelvis, end quote. The evolution soup host then remarks, quote, that reminds me of the more primitive hominins like Lucy. Their rib cages kind of flared out, end quote. Professor Babb nods in agreement. The study Dr. Babb refers to is Rib Cage Anatomy in Homo Erectus, Nature.com 2020, co-authors Martinez, Bastier, and Spore. Professor Babb does not accuse Leakey of malfeasance, but as we shall soon see, Leakey may have had political as well as personal motivation to steer Turkana Boy research in a particular direction. Johansson versus Leakey. Homo erectus and Homo habilis were key components in building the Leakey family legacy. Richard Leakey wanted Homo habilis, discovered by his parents, to be at the base of genus Homo. Homo erectus would be positioned as the more modern species. The Turkana boy reconstruction was done in 1984 by two husband and wife teams, Alan Walker and Pat Shipman, and Richard and Meve Leakey. Ancestral Passions, page 530. With Turkana Boy, nothing as dramatic had been found since Lucy. Continuing, early estimates based on a single leg and arm bones had suggested Homo erectus were stocky people of medium height. But the Turkana Boy was, quote, clearly a strapping youth, end quote, said Richard. Leakey even compared Turkana Boy to having a physique like a modern-day basketball player. At the time, Leakey and Lucy discoverer Donald Johansson were engaged in a ferocious rivalry, both eager to be the first to discover the first species at the base of genus Homo. Homo habilis had been discovered by Mary Leakey in 1964. The Leakeys had argued for a direct line from Homo habilis to Homo erectus. But other paleoanthropologists challenged the phylogeny. They argued to separate Homo ergaster and Homo erectus into African and Eurasian clades. Kenya in chaos. Kenya had gained its independence from Britain in 1963. There was a brief period of calm, followed by decades of violence. White farmers were particularly vulnerable to brutal attacks by the Mau Mau rebels. Often they were hacked to death or burned alive. The Leakeys had helped to establish Kenya as the birthplace of mankind. They were held in high esteem by many political factions. But in the outback, the Leakeys and their teams were especially vulnerable to bandits and warring factions. The good, bad, and ugly sides of Richard Leakey. Back in Nairobi, Philip Leakey was elected to Parliament. Richard Leakey had been the longtime director of the Kenya National Wildlife Conservation Board, but he was anxious to gain higher office like his older brother. Climbing the political ladder in the tumultuous world of Kenyan politics meant currying favors with black nationalists. Leakey, who spoke fluent Kikuyu, played heavy on anti-racism and pro-conservation themes. His close relations with international bodies such as the IMF also helped him.
Leakey was appointed as the first national director of Kenya's wildlife department, though his tenure was not without controversy. Ending animal cruelty was at the top of his agenda, which made him a prime target of the powerful poachers. Leakey hopped from one cabinet post to another. He was fired, rehired, and then fired again. All the while, he continued to raise funds for the Leakey Foundation. Reassignment of Homo ergaster shakes the human family tree. It was Leakey's wife, Meve, who may have ultimately given even more credibility to separation of Homo ergaster from Homo erectus. Another skull was found at Kubifora in 2000 by Meve Leakey's team. It was originally identified as Homo erectus, but the cranial capacity at 690 cc is far too small to justify that classification. In comparison to Meve Leakey's Homo erectus skull at 690 cc, some of the Asia erectus skulls are at 1100 cc. As stated by Dr. Babb, the ribcage and pelvis are strong evidence for separate species classifications for Homo erectus and Homo ergaster. Homo ergaster, barrel chested, smaller statue, not fully bipedal, sloping cranium and brain capacity 690 cc to 880 cc. Eurasia erectus, fully bipedal, more modern anatomy, cranium capacity 900 to 1100 cc. As Australia Museum notes, the vast difference in traits has caused some experts to rethink whether these should be separate species. One distinct possibility, Homo ergaster is an African species while Homo erectus is fully Eurasian. If confirmed, that would present a major challenge to out of Africa. Thank you for watching. More to come.